All right, guys. I wanted to make a series of setup videos here um, pertaining to the master plotter. This is the FC 3600, and um, basically what I want to do is I kind of want to make it easy for you guys to get this thing going because, boy, oh, boy, can you have some frustrating times initially with this particular plotter. So in this particular video, I want to talk about static electricity with this particular plotter. Um, you're going to have a lot of issues and especially if you're cutting window film uh, like I am um, and the issues that you're going to have are going to be um, basically you're going to have uh, blade pressure irregularity you're going to cut through your material you're going to have the plotter go off track and cut uh, basically uh, unintended portions of the material you're working on and basically damage your material and you're going to have um, a, a phenomena where the cutter head basically stops it cuts it stops it cuts it stops it cuts it stops and all of these problems, I may think of another one here at more close to uh, you know the end of this video, but all of these issues are related to the static uh, electricity, and the static electricity can come from a couple of different areas. Uh, one, I found that I had this plotter set up on a rug. Big no-no. Do not have the plotter set up on a rug. Uh, so I took it off the rug and I put it on the floor. That that helped a little bit. Uh, the other area was I have a dehumidifier down here in the basement where I'm doing my cutting. And I was basically running that all the time. That was a big no-no. So I took that and I, I turned that off. The other area that I don't think anybody really has, has looked at is the film itself. Um, the film itself comes with a good amount of static electricity in it. So it's an area where uh, it's easy to overlook. Now, uh, the, the final solution to this whole thing has been grounding this machine out. Um, I've grounded the machine out in two different ways. Number one, I ran uh, part of the wire... Uh, for the grounding that I set up right to the actual roller bar that the film itself sits on. And this is a like a speaker wire that I ran back to the ground. I'm going to show you guys that. But it's basically four wires. I took two of them and I put them on the uh, roller bar. And I took two of them here, if you can see, and I grounded it actually to the bottom of the sheen. Now, the, the master plotter came with a ground wire initially, and the tech support guy told me, don't worry about that. You don't need that. So I said, oh, okay. So, you know, I'm having all these cutting issues, and I've read a lot of stuff about this plotter on the forums, and a lot of people sent the machine back right away and had a lot of issues. And apparently the more expensive plotters don't have this issue uh, and don't, are not susceptible to the static electricity uh, like this particular plotter is. But, folks... This particular plotter is susceptible to uh, this stuff. So the final solution, which really allowed me to get a more consistent cut on a regular basis, was to ground this machine out in the manner that I said, the two different grounding areas. And what I did was I ran this wire up, and you can see, and it goes all the way over here in my basement, but I actually ran it straight to my ground for the house that goes outside to the grounding um, the grounding rods that are actually in the ground. So you can see right here my wire comes in and it's actually right to the ground for the house. So um, once I did this, I had just, uh, you know, a total relief in the fact that uh, I wasn't having as many issues as uh, I initially was 
uh, when it was ungrounded. I mean, I basically was wrecking film, and I couldn't make a consistent cut to save my life with this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you guys a little bit in this particular video. I'm just exclusively talking about uh, machine setup. And, um, you know, I tried a whole bunch of different things. I tried initially to put some tape there, and you can see it catches some stuff. And that ultimately overall didn't work. But I put that there to kind of be a buffer between the metal and the actual material because what I was having was I was having my film actually touch this bar down in here, uh, the support unit, and it actually would stick to it. And as soon as I grounded this machine, that, that stopped happening. And um, all of these problems, for the most part, went away. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to queue up. i got to do a little cut in here. Um, actually, um, no, this is the wrong film here. I'm going to load up a different uh, spool here. I'm going to load up a different roll of film here. I apologize for that. And I'm just going to cut a little bit, and I'm just going to show you. Uh, since I've done this with the machine, the machine's been pretty dependable. And, uh, you know, if you guys are on a budget, you know, for me, it's a long story, but I just, uh, I just came back to the world of automotive glass tinting and uh, kind of knew that I wanted to have a plotter. And I didn't really have the three, four, five grand to lay out on a Roland or a nice unit. So I was kind of forced to... To go this route, you know, and it's been a frustrating, uh, it's been a frustrating few months to say the least. It really took me about three months to really figure this thing out and get it set up. And I know that a lot of people out there are frustrated easily and may just go, ah, forget it. I'd rather just do it the old-fashioned way, especially for glass tinters. But um, this really helped out for me, and I'd like to help you guys out as well. Um, so I'm going to show you how this thing cuts here. Let me queue up. Uh, I'm using Film and Vinyl Designs. Uh, Brent down in, uh, I believe he's in Texas. Film and Vinyl Designs, fantastic program. Uh, really does a good job, and I really enjoy using it. Um, let me see what I got here. I got to do... I got a cut film here for a job later at a dealership, an 09 Acura TSX. Okay, so let me pull that up. A 2009 Acura TSX four-door, four-door sedan. I'm going to use the long. I like to tuck my film, so I'm going to use the long. I'm just going to measure this and make sure that these two pieces are going to fit uh, and be able to be cut out of this one roll, the width here. Whoops, I had my USB hub fall there, no problem. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this queued up, and I'm going to go ahead and cut. And I had a lot of issues, man. I'm really happy that this thing is actually working in a, in a good consistent manner uh, it is a, it is a little bit of a loud plotter I mean a lot of people complain and whine about that and uh, you know I don't really care I just want to get my pieces cut it's a little annoying for making a video here um, but basically I'm not really babysitting the plotter which I've had to do before right now I'm just kind of letting it you know it's doing its thing and I am going to help it along just a little bit right in here just so it doesn't get bunched up but all in all, this thing is cutting good. And I was ready, almost ready to call prepaid legal and have my attorneys work on this. And I wasn't going to send this back for a refund because they were telling me that they weren't going to really uh, uh, exchange it for me or give me a refund. And I was pretty convinced it was a damaged or, you know, a broken unit. And I kept reading forms. I kept looking at the information. And I found out that basically the static electricity was really my main problem. And ever since I've grounded it, folks, the thing's been working well. So I hope I've been able to uh, help you guys. And uh, if you're looking to get a cheap plotter, it is a good plotter. you got to really work with it and get it set up properly. And um, 
you know, if you got the money, go for the more expensive unit. But uh, it, it's a pretty dependable, pretty useful, and I've gotten my money out of it. So hope that helps you guys out. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, um, write a comment here and uh, send me a Facebook uh, a friend request, Joe uh, Rachel, R-A-J-C-H-E-L. And uh, I appreciate your time.